St. Edward, one of the most venerated English saints, was the son of the holy, right-believing Edgar the Peaceful, King of England, and Queen Ethelfleda, who died soon after his birth. According to different sources, St. Edward was born either in 959 or in 962-963. The reign of King Edgar was marked by a great revival of monasticism, church life and piety among the English people, and he wholeheartedly supported the three great episcopal restorers of the English church after the 9th century Danish invasions, Dunstan of Canterbury, who baptised Edward, Oswald of Worcester, and Ethelwold of Winchester. According to tradition, sometime before St. Edward's birth, St. Edgar had an unusual dream, which his wise and saintly mother Elgiva, St. Edward's grandmother, formerly queen and then abbess of Shaftesbury, explained thus. Following St. Edgar's repose, the English church would be attacked. The supporters of his, Edgar's younger son, would murder his elder son. The former then would reign on earth, while the latter would reign in heaven. These prophetic words eventually came true. St. Edward's younger brother was Ethelred, Ethelred the Unready, 968, 1016, who was born from his father's second marriage. St. Edward ascended the English throne in 975 at the age of only 13, or 16, after the sudden death of his father St. Edgar, aged only 32. According to one of the sources of that time, St. Edward was a young man of piety, exemplary behaviour, a genuine Orthodox Christian who led a devout and God-fearing life. As his father St. Edgar, especially in the second half of his life, young Edward loved God and the Church above all things. He was a benefactor of the needy, a refuge for the pious, defender of the faith of Christ, and filled with many virtues. Saints Dunstan of Canterbury and Oswald of Worcester anointed him as king at Kingston upon Thames. On becoming king, St. Edward with great enthusiasm continued the labours of his father to revive and strengthen the church and monastic life in the country. Many new monasteries were opened or restored all over England during his short reign. Prayer and Christian piety were the basic things that St. Edward saw at the core of a true kingdom. Unfortunately, all this was not to last long. Soon the whole of England was stricken with a terrible famine. And at the same time, disturbances began in the country that added to this tragedy. Some aristocrats were extremely unpleasant with St. Edward for endowing monasteries with lands and estates. These nobles decided to acquire these lands at all costs for themselves. Some of them, in their fury, even attacked a number of monasteries and temporarily drove out monks and nuns from them and replaced them with married clergy. The nobleman wished to depose the godly and resolute ruler Edward and instead enthrone his younger brother, the pliable Ethelred. The archpastor Dunstan of Canterbury, one of the greatest prophets and visionaries of the English church, who stood at the head of the English church in the second half of the 10th century for nearly 30 years, did all his best to defend St. Edward and support him in his activities. In fact, a majority of the aristocrats supported him as well. However, several wicked nobles, apparently together with St. Edward's widowed stepmother Elfrida, thus conceived a plan to murder the innocent king. And on March 18, 978, according to another version, 979, St. Edward was treacherously slain, this happened in the following way. On that day, the young Edward was hunting in the forest not far from the town of Wareham, in the county of Dorset in southwest England. He decided to pay a visit to his brother Ethelred, who was being brought up at his mother's in Corfe, among the Purbeck Hills, a ridge of chalk downs, nearby. As Edward approached Corfe on horseback, Elfrida at once came up to him and with a sham greeting offered him drink. As soon as Edward took the goblet, one of the courtiers suddenly thrust a knife into him. The king fell out of his saddle, one of his feet stuck in the stirrup, and the horse dragged the wounded king, nobody helping him, until his dead body finally fell into the spring at the foot of the hill where Corfe Castle stands today. It was said that water of this spring healed many people from eye diseases. On the orders of Elfrida, the body of the martyred king was thrown into a tiny dilapidated hut very close to the site of his martyrdom. A certain woman lived in this house who was blind from birth. 
On the following night, she felt as if an unearthly light had entirely filled her cottage and she was healed from blindness at once. Under the shabby clothes with which the murderers had covered the saint's body, the woman found the king's holy relics. Next morning, many people in the vicinity learned about the miracle, including the queen, who then ordered her servants to bury Edward's relics in a boggy area near Wareham and to forget about the king forever. This is approximately what the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle wrote on St. Edward late in the 10th century. Since the Angles came to the island of Britain, they have not committed a more terrible crime than this one. People killed him, but the Lord glorified him. In lifetime, an earthly king, and after death, a heavenly saint. The murderers wiped the memory of him from the face of the earth, but the heavenly father made him holy, both in paradise and on earth. Those who did not kneel before him when he was alive now humbly venerate his precious relics. Now we see that the wisdom of men, guile, and plans of this world are nothing in comparison with the providence of God. And God vouchsafed the people to see with what glory St. Edward was rewarded.